One thing, just one simple thing that will not cost you a penny that you can start doing that's going to give you at least five bonkers, brilliant benefits. Hi, my name's Christine L. Conroy. Welcome to Happy Stuff and Fluff. And yesterday, I want to share with you the most inanely simple thing that I've added to my morning routine that has made such a difference to my life. I can't tell you. Well, I can tell you. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you. You'll never guess. So easy and so simple. So, a few, 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 few videos back, uh, we talked about my morning routine and we talked about waking up and doing the breathing. I'll leave a link to the video down below if you didn't see it. We talked about breathing and we talked about drinking water and we talked about um, going out into the garden, come what may, in order to, um, in order to synchronise your circadian rhythms. Do you remember that? your circadian rhythms being the um, internal clock that uh, controls your biological system, shall we say. And one of the triggers that sets that in motion is light. Remember we talked about that. And also, um, a few videos back when we were talking about small changes or tiny, tiny changes, I told you that I wanted to start getting out of bed an hour earlier in the morning. One or two of you agreed with that, but said you'd tried more than once and, you know, it just didn't happen. Well, I found the key, and this is not, the, this is not even the thing I'm talking about, but I'll just tell you um, to set it up. Um, so I've started, I, I started just to set the clock 10 minutes earlier. That's all, just 10 minutes, and I did that for about a week. And then another 10 minutes until finally, um, I was up at seven o'clock in the morning. Now, that was great. I was, that's what I wanted to do. And I must admit, it made me, um, it helped me to sleep better at night. However, I was up at seven o'clock. Now, my other role, when I'm wearing my other hat at the um, Kitchen Design Studio, we don't actually start work there until 10 o'clock. And when I'm doing my own work, this work, then I like to be at my computer by nine o'clock. However, I've changed that too, uh, and that's a story for another video. And so what does one do when you wake up at seven o'clock and you, know, you don't have to do anything until 9.30? Very often I don't even eat breakfast, so there was that. So guess what we decided to do? Every morning since January, through thick and thin, all weather, Mr Kitchen and I have gone out for a walk first thing in the morning. Now, don't roll your eyes here now, or skip, or turn off. This is, this is vitally important. I think it is. So, right, who wants to roll out of bed and go for a walk in the pouring rain? Well, I suggest if you're going to do this with me, then you do it on a fine weather day first until you get until you get going, as it were, and then add going out into the rain. All we do, and I'm going to take you with me, all we do is go for a walk around a local, it's not really a lake and it's a bit bigger than a pond, but it's a body of water. We literally go and walk around it few caveats to that but we just go and walk around then we come back and if we're having breakfast we'll have breakfast then um, and if not I'll have a glass of hot water a cup of hot water with lemon in it usually because uh, I'm kind of slowing down on the coffee a bit too so that's what we do and I cannot tell you how much better it's made me feel. Now, for those of you who sometimes get up in the morning feeling fed up, I think it's the serotonin levels are low when that happens, but sometimes even before your day has started, you're feeling down. That's the time. And if you're going through anything particularly stressful at the moment, this is the time you should do this walking. 
Exercise as we know, you need to keep moving. It helps with your exercise. It synchronizes your circadian rhythm because of the light. That's one of the triggers that tells your body, stop producing melatonin, which helps you to sleep and makes you dopey, and start producing vitamin D. That's the trigger. But you need to let the light hit your eyes for at least 10 minutes, 10 or 15 minutes. Remember, we talked about this. So rather than go standing out in the garden for 10 or 15 minutes, or on the balcony in my case, I we do this now and we're walking for about 20 minutes, literally about 20 minutes depending. Um, and that gets the light into your eyes, that synchronizes your circadian rhythms. It's all about bathing in nature. We know how good that makes us feel. And then mindfulness, because this is, this is one of the caveats, and I'll tell you about that while we're actually walking. It's one of the caveats. But it improves your, the way you're feeling mentally tenfold, especially if you use mindfulness and focus entirely on what you're seeing, then you get that boost, that absolute boost in your mood by doing the walk and then when you come back you've done your exercise you've done your mindfulness you've done your breathing it really sets you up for the day and once you start with that positive emotion it builds into the upward spiral and it kickstarts your day in a way that i've never experienced before and i know it sounds ridiculous you only went for a walk christine yes yes that's exactly it. I only went for a walk for 20 minutes. Now then, what I have to do, because obviously, as I've said, especially if I haven't slept very well, and then the alarm clock goes off, it's so tempting, isn't it? I get it, to say, oh, well, I don't really have to be up for anything, so I'll just turn over and doze. You've got to get yourself out of that. The way to do it, get the clothes that you're going to wear to walk beside your bed. Don't worry about well, you'll see. <laughs> Don't worry about the way you look. I just scrub my hair back, get into the clothes, just have a quick glass of water, I tend to, before we set off, and off we go, without even thinking about it. Remember tipping the bucket? That's the way to start it, I promise you. You will not be doing this for long before, if ever the day comes where for some reason you can't do it, obviously life sometimes gets in the way, um, you will really miss it. And when now when that happens to us, if we can't get it done in the morning, which does not happen often because we love it so much, we'll do it later on in the daytime. I suppose just to get that 20 minutes of nature bathing and um, mindfulness in. Okay, so what I want you to do is to come for a walk with me. Come on our walk. Now you'll have to excuse me, you know I'm not well, not yet. I'm not a vlogger as such, and um, I've had to use my phone camera to film this, but you're gonna get the gist of it. So come on, come and take a walk with me and I'll show you what I mean. So you see how peaceful it is already, especially when the water's still like this. It was quite a nice, calm day at this day. It's around about 7.30 in the morning, I would say. <laughs> Look at this. I have to say, one of the things I enjoy about the walk the most is the noise, which you can't hear at the moment because I had to turn my um, phone microphone off. Um, but the different noises of the different birds, I absolutely love that. It sends me into a kind of trance if I allow it to. Um, and you can see there how close the road is to this. But once you come round the back here, which is where we walk, Round the back, you can't really, well, you can't see them, certainly. 
And then here we have the geese, who are certainly not afraid of humans, that's for sure. I love the sound of the geese too. I know lots of people complain about them, especially when they're flying over early in the morning, but I love that too. And then on this side, now at this time of year, uh, the cow pass is actually hiding the fact that there is like a silt bed at the back of there, which when it rains becomes a river, of course. Um, yeah, so it's, you know, we're noticing the changes is something, the changes that happen on a daily basis is something to, to notice. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, not the usual effect I have on people when I say good morning. Oh, there we are. Acknowledged me at least. No, off he goes. Also to the right hand side of the path that you'll see in a second is a flowing river. So it's quite a, it's quite a lovely landscape in fact. An early morning dog walker. I have to say that most of the people we encounter on this early morning walk are walking dogs. We've thought about it. We think about it all the time, in fact. Um, maybe, maybe, not just at the moment. Yeah, put the clothes you want to walk in by your bed, on the floor by your bed, roll out of bed, into your clothes and just go. Don't second guess it, don't think about it. Just do it and pretty soon it becomes a habit. And now, um, we've both said we don't feel, if we have to miss it for any reason, we miss it. Um, oh, I was just trying to show you the buttercups on the field over there and I've turned around. Um, so yes, this is one lovely pleasure that doesn't cost us anything. Starts the day off in the right way. We get some walking in and it's just beautiful to be in nature. Yes, yeah, so that's me when I've just rolled out of bed, by the way, so excuse that. Um, but yes, the key to this is noticing and listening and looking. That's the river I was saying. Again, it's quite still. I do prefer it when it's a little bit wilder than this, when the river's actually flowing. But there you go. So, yeah, getting back to being mindful about it. I mean, you see a lot of people walking and talking about noticing, can anybody tell me what this is? Comments please below. You see, we're not very educated, very well educated in terms of the names of things that we see in nature. And it's never really bothered me because I like to just enjoy the beauty of it. But I must admit I'm a little bit curious, more curious now about the names of things. And so... Um, yeah, if you know what that was, please let me know. So we do uh, see people walking dogs, and some of them, if I'm honest with you, have faces like thunder. And I wonder, you know, what are they thinking about? Are they chewing over their problems and concerns? And in which case, the walk will not have the benefits for them that it has for us. When there's two of us walking together, of course, there, there is... Um, the possibility that our conversation may descend into our concerns and worries about work or day-to-day -day issues and so on. We put a stop to that. We've decided that's not going to happen. Um, and so in order to get the success and get the benefits that we want from this walk, it is about being absolutely 100% present can get the different materials, the different colours, the different smells and sounds and what we can feel. 
that is the key to the success of the walk. So you do have to be very conscious about that and determined that that's what you're going to do. And then again, just like you would if you were meditating, if your mind does wander to any of your problems, then you think to yourself, even say to yourself, I'll think about that when I finish the walk and bring yourself back to the present moment. This is an area of the walk where the long grass area where they leave it to grow. Uh, They leave the wildflowers to grow to attract uh, insects and that kind of thing. But it does look very pretty, I have to say. I'm not a fan of bugs. Have I said that to you before? (laughs) Um, But I appreciate the beauty of that, that's for sure. Now, when we first started walking, the swan's nest was behind here on the left hand side but early in the year we had such torrential rain and the nest just went unfortunately it was quite of a tra- bit of a tragedy there's always been two swans but um, for the last week or so we've only seen one we don't know where the other one is and um, you know we thought perhaps there might be a nest somewhere else perhaps hiding in the trees over there, but we certainly haven't seen the second swan. You can see the first one there, seemingly still fast asleep at the moment. Oh, it's just divine. So we're on the journey home now, which is probably about five minutes, that's all. The road, which you can see here, is because because of the torrential rain I mentioned. A lot of the country roads around here are filled with potholes, some of them quite dangerous. And so there seems to be a mad campaign to get these potholes filled, sorted out. Such a beautiful day. But as I said to you, now we go come rain or shine. So there it is, one simple thing that you can add to your morning routine that's going to make you feel so much better and help you to be more productive and in a better mood and then sleep better that evening. I hope you decide to join me (laughs) in doing that. Now, I have some news for you. Stitch on Silver Linings, my book, in case you didn't know. (laughs) Um, Stitch on Silver Linings is now available again, thanks to the reprint, and it's available on my website, a special edition of it, where I will... You tell me what message you want to put in there, either for yourself or if you're buying for a gift or both. And I will personally write the message and sign the books before I send them to you. And the same with uh, Voices of the 21st Century, Women Empowered by Passion and Purpose. I think you will enjoy both of those books enormously. Um, So you can do that. Now, if you don't like to read books and prefer to read e-books, you can get Stitcher on Silver Linings on an ebook from Amazon. So I'd love you to do that. If you've enjoyed this video, please will you give it some love, a thumbs up, um, a share even, and let me know in the comments box below what you think. And if you'd like me to do more blogging once I've become a little bit less self-conscious about talking to myself by myself, out in the open air, as it were. I'm sure it will come with practice. Okay, thank you so much for being here and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.